The first step is admitting you have a problem. I am weak to temptation. It's my own fault, really. I'm the one that calls up the fabric store and innocently asks, hey, when's your next pattern sale? And then I mark it down in my phone and a week later it pops up and I think, ooh, a pattern sale. I'll just go check it out, see if there's anything that catches my eye. Well, for 99 cents, it doesn't take that much to catch my eye. Of course I rationalize it. I mean, collecting patterns is cheaper and it takes up less space than collecting fabric as if that's any excuse. But normally these patterns are priced around $20, sometimes even more, and for 99 cents, who can pass up a bargain like that? People with willpower, probably, but I am not one of those people. So, without further ado. Mm. Behold my shame. I can't even close it anymore. I mean, I could get a bigger binder, but I think that would just tempt me to make the problem even worse. So in front, I have patterns that I've drafted myself or copied from existing garments. This is the collection of patterns that I use for my Kiki costume. So I have the bag, the bow, and the dress, as well as some little dye swatches. Next, I have a pair of yoga shorts that I copied from a pair of existing yoga pants, and I actually used leftover fabric from the Kiki costume to make. A swimsuit I copied from an existing garment, but I kind of botched the leg hole, so mixed results on this one. And a heating pad and wrap, great for lower back pain and DUS, demonic uterine syndrome, and a little drawstring backpack. An underbust corset I have yet to attempt. And you may recognize this one as the bodice to my blue fairy costume if you've seen that video. If not, you should check out that video, cause fairies. So I'm not gonna go through and explain why I got all of these, cause honestly, for some of them, I have no idea. However, I really liked this one. Like the second I saw it, I thought, that looks like a coat that I'd wear until it fell apart. I love the drape and silhouette. I also love how it's made up of these long vertical panels and there's no waist seam interrupting the line. I just think it's so pretty. And then the hood on this is just lovely. I think if you extended the hem on this one, it would make a very cute dress and I love the little godets and princess seam and freaking wrap dresses. I love wrap dresses, no zippers, no buttons. Wrap dresses are perfect and the world needs more. Also with pockets, that would be a perfect dress. For these two, I don't know. They're just interesting vintage patterns, a little sunsu and another wrap dresses because again, I hate zippers. This one I got, honestly, because Mimi G looks so freaking fantastic in it, and I love the way um, the print she used and the pattern matching she did on the pockets. Also, on the dress, there's a very interesting curved dart that goes from the waist up to the bust, and I've never really seen that before. I don't think I could pull this ensemble off. Those lapels are, like, huge, but it looks so good on her. And I got this one entirely because of the high-waisted, non-stretch shorts with pockets. I love pockets. Pajamas, because I basically live in pajamas at home. And leggings, because I basically live in leggings everywhere else. Cute bras and cute little high-waisted bikini. So this. I chose the pattern because I was reminded of a really lovely Rococo inspired Lolita set, but the styling is very questionable because you've got kind of muted tones, off-white, pastel kind of peach colors, and then you've got neon fuchsia and neon fuchsia fake eyelashes and a purple shiny wig, and I mean, she's wearing... Mm. I'm in no position to criticize anyone's makeup, but that contour, like, is a bit much. The styling is good from like the toes to collarbone. And then something just went awry. Maybe it looked better in person, just didn't photograph well, I don't know. This one turned out reasonably well. It's very Wednesday Adams. I think it's cute. Okay, so this pattern. I could not say no to this pattern. It's just so delightfully uh, over the top. 
And part of me suspects the reason that it's a drawing instead of a photograph of a finished sample is because maybe they didn't work out all the fit issues because like cupped overbusts are like crazy difficult. I've never done one, but I hear they are. All right, this one. I know that I probably will never make this one because even with the smallest size, I'd have to raise the hem of the jacket, bring in the shoulder, and probably adjust the sleeve length, never mind even attempting the pants. I'd probably just use a different pants pattern. But this photo is so freaking delightful and it was 99 cents, I have no regrets. Okay, first off, we've got the Marvel suit, we've got Iron Man, Hulk, and I think that's Thor. And he's up here pulling like the Clark Kent glasses thing. I'm like, dude, that's DC. This is Marvel. Do you even comics? Next, we have a neon green peppermint candy print suit. And this model, he's doing his best to keep a straight face. And it's just, it's so delightful. And then the piece de resistance, the finale, we've got like Bermuda length shorts in pink and white candy stripes and a flamingo jacket. And this guy's doing his best Don Draper impersonation. And it's just fabulous. This entire thing is just delightful. And then over here, we've got like a nice little kimono pattern and a couple of hats and some plushies. I've never actually attempted plushies, but these look relatively simple and very cute. So, how many of these patterns have I actually used? One. Well, to be precise, one part of one pattern piece. I suppose the first real question is why? Why do I collect so many patterns that I don't use? Well, I might use them, and they were only 99 cents, and I find them interesting. So those are reasons. I don't know if they're good reasons, but they're reasons. Second question, why don't I use them? Well, first off, intimidation. I'm a very easily intimidated person. In fact, in any given room, I am the most intimidated person in that room, even if I'm alone with nothing but a camera. It's pretty bad. I'm working on it. Secondly, I think we can all agree that the tissue paper that patterns are printed on is extremely irritating to deal with. I am not a delicate or patient person, so I need my patterns to be made out of something a little bit more durable if it's going to survive the process. Third, 5 8 inch seam allowances. What kind of arbitrary nonsense is that? That's an inch and a quarter per seam, and I get that it's for adjusting the fit later, and that most sewing machines have a little seam guide on them, but still, is it so much to ask for for an easy to eyeball measurement, like half an inch or a centimeter? Am I asking for the moon here? Seriously. Actually, on that note, I need my glasses for this. America. It's time to stop being stubborn and get with the program. The rest of the world agrees. Science agrees. We need to embrace the metric system. Three feet to a yard, 12 inches to a foot, and we're breaking up inches into like eights and 16. Can you divide by 16 in your head? I can't. Then again, I'm not great at math. But still, even a moron like me knows it's easier to divide by 10. We need to embrace the metric system. Also, abolish pennies and nickels because they cost more to make than they're worth. Common sense, people. That tangent aside, I hope you liked seeing my pattern collection and enjoyed this video. Um, thank you for watching, and if you feel like it, subscribe. Bye!